Like I was running with a group and I had tattoos and I listened to like punk rock, the Smith. I'd get, you know, there'd be times where I'd come out here and listen to the Smiths for two hours on a little long run, right? And so the group I was in was more traditional ultra runners and, you know, they were just train, train, you know, and it's this traditional group. And so I was like, there has to be people like me, right? Like I can't be the only person. I felt like kind of a black sheep. You know, they, uh, these running groups had board members and presidents and had elections, you know? Guts is, at least the way that I started it, um, is a little more like a traditional, what I would say a traditional running club is like. You know, you have a, a, a membership list and you have a board and bylaws. And We operate under guidelines, uh, we're, we're uh, under RRCA. We, um, we're a running club under their standards, so we're under that umbrella. Watermelon, chicken and grits. The Yeti group is, um, you know, they're kind of a little bit uh, uh, atypical from some of the other uh, trail running groups and that kind of thing. This is the fucking Yeti trail runners. Like, there's no CEO, there's no president, there's no meetings, right? There, and there sure as hell is no fucking compromise. You'll be climbing over trees, going through creeks. Just be comfortable with it, okay? He's a guy that doesn't give a shit and he's gonna do what he wants to do. Hey, this is fun, and if you get lost, guess what? You're lost. <laughs> Yeah, right there in the back view, I got drunk as hell. I'm a talking about hell fire. Oh, hell fire. Yeah, hell fire. That's where I'm found. I'm a talking about hell fire. He's very uh, energetic and uh, friendly and uh, kind of crazy. He's a great guy to meet and run with and learn about ultra running. I got my first kiss at the 7-Eleven, I drank my first beer, so, you know, maybe this will be a lot of first for you guys too. 60, 70 miles, I feel it today. When I say I don't really give a fuck what people think, I really don't give a fuck. If you get lost, get back on trail, we'll have fun, there's beer here, okay? Like, you know. You know how trail runners drive? I'm gonna show you. Only by headlamp. You ready? Okay. Put this shit in drive. This is the only way I know how to drive, Rick. Right? Oh, shit. <laughs>so I was a runner in high school, ran cross country, did really well, but skateboarding was my number one priority. Yeah, I won a lot of races, right? So, and, and enjoyed it, right? And uh, I enjoyed the run. I didn't know if I enjoyed racing as much and I didn't, I sure as hell didn't enjoy practicing. Like my coach, you know, if we interviewed him, he'd probably tell me that I was like the worst. Are uh, Yeti trail races irreverent? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Are what? Irreverent. Irreverent? <laughs> yeah, that's the fucking basis of it. <laughs> I just would show up and run the meets. I love to just run in the woods, right? So if they were out doing track or something that day, I just wouldn't show up. And whatever consequence it was, like if I didn't run in the meet, I just didn't run in the meet. Like, you know, and the team would be so mad at me, but I was like, I, I don't, you know, this is... I love skateboarding, and if you're gonna run on a track, or you're gonna run on the road, or wherever it may be, I just want gun to practice. I didn't go out and run to make the team better, the high school better, to have my name in the paper. I ran, I enjoyed the shit out of it, so I ran. Just trying to open and keep it going, and. Hopefully we get a lot of first time finishers today.
That's my main goal today. After high school, didn't run anymore, and I got into the alcohol industry, and I smoked at the time, and I went to the doctor one day, and he's like, you know, you're a young dude. You don't want to take pills like this young, right? Like, you stop smoking. And it just happened in that time period, I went back to the doctor for a follow-up, and I looked down while I was waiting, and there was an article about someone running 50 miles in the woods. And my idea of running at the time was people just run on the roads and run 5Ks, 10Ks, which is fine, right? Like, I have nothing against it. It just didn't speak to me. And I read this article about this guy going over mountains, right, for 50 miles and through, you know, vast wilderness areas. I was like, that's what I, where I want to be. It, it really was like that. And I had no doubt in my mind that's what I was going to do. And around about that time, like I ventured out for some races and came back with an idea I was going to make races for people like me. The races, you know, that I put on are much different than some traditional shit that was happening. When I think of Yeti, I think of the counter movement to the commercialization of trail running. And I hadn't really seen that before. You know, those races that have the big corporate sponsors. I think that it kind of feels like someone's trying to sell you something a lot of times at those races. Like I'd show up to races and they would have like, the back of the shirts that have all these big corporate sponsors. And I was like, what the hell do these people have to, to do with trail running? And they have absolutely nothing to do with it, you know? And that's when I just said, I am going to do things my way. The fucking place that does the printing produce, like metal, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like they made a mistake, but they know me in their fucking heart. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, that's what fucking amazes me. We've watched skateboarding, you know, these big corporations get involved in it because they, there's a little bit of money in it. And, uh, you know, they kind of fucking ruin the essence of it and because the basis of skateboarding is fun, right? Like, how the fuck do you score 92.6 on a skateboard? That still amazes me. How many do you have something? Oh, okay. <laughs> I... It's more of an event than it is a race. It's not, I mean, there are a couple people racing, but then the rest of it is people having fun and enjoying each other's company. It sounds hippie-ish, but I guess it is a little bit. People, love the people. All my friends are here. So it's the only 50K I do all year. Yeah? So, yeah. Why this one? Uh, it's, uh, this is fun. What are your true feelings on Jason? Jason, you're fucking lame. Like, I try to know everyone's story. This is why I keep races to like 250. I go and I look at their stories on Instagram, Facebook of every participant before race day. If I see people and, and they're down, they want to quit, like, you kind of, I know what kind of pep talk to give them, right? Because I know their story. Started running to lose weight, and managed to drop about 55 pounds. And Finding trail running and just the community helps it happen, but also because I suck at it. And I grew up and I did sports I was great at. So it's kind of nice to, to do something that I really struggle becoming better at. And it really makes it, you know, worthwhile to get out there and do it. I have a goal between nine and 10 hours. Okay. Um, but I also do know that there's a time limit of 12 hours. So if I'm the last person or if I'm at 12 hours, I'm at 12 hours. I'm not worried about it, I just need to cross the finish line. What's the, what's the plan for today? Start out slow and get slower. Do you have a goal time in mind? A good time. Imagine if you, like, like, stumbled upon this Yeti Trail Runners, right? Like, all you know about racing is shit you see on TV, you know, like, and then suddenly you show up here and there's like a fucking dance party going on, like people running 50K, slamming beers, and you know, like, I mean, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. It's like competition doesn't need to be put in everything sometimes, you know, like, you know, I, like I feel that way about skateboarding. Like, 
it's going to the fucking Olympics. Like, why? You know? It's not a sport. Pull in a little closer. This isn't a road race and we don't have fucking waves. <laughs> He will say, when you see a bunch of ribbon, that means shit's about to happen. If you see two of these together, something's gonna happen. When you see this, it means I need to turn somewhere, okay? When you see three flags lined up, some shit's gonna happen. Like, you need to turn. And so whenever we're out there or we see like a, a turn, we'll go, oh no, shit's about to happen. When he's up at the Yeti 100, it's great because he's like, 12 year old Girl Scouts do this every day. This shit. This is simple. Don't mess it up. <laughs> don't, don't mess it up. <laughs> it's like, you know, if you get off the course, you know, you know, it's on you. If you get lost today, it's your fault. We change it every year. Do not follow the person in front of you. <laughs> if you mess it up, don't fucking tell me. <laughs> today we got about 50 people. This is our first ultra, so all you... <laughs> Let's run this race three, four, five, six, seven fucking times. Help everyone out, okay? I mean, he doesn't care if you're fast or slow or, you know, an elite runner or someone who's just starting, who's never been on trails before. He doesn't care if you're the slowest person out there. He doesn't care if you're hiking the course. He just wants you to come out and have a good time with the Yeti Trail Runners. This is what we're here to do. Do not drop from this 50K. Do not. Him and I'll differ sometimes about that. Like, I'm like, well, you can't just walk this whole race. That's not like trail running. You can walk this shit in. Trust me, you can walk it. Do not come through the arch if you're not finishing. Do not come through that arch and tell me you're dropping. Nobody drops today, okay? 100% finishing rate. Let's do something that's never been done. So one thing about this race is it's meant for people to finish it. There's a lot of there's a lot of races in the world you can pay three thousand fucking dollars and run with elites and shit. This is just the everyday person's race, and I want people to finish. To the right, Jason. Yep. I hope you're not going. You can't get off course this early. <laughs> Even with the year with a downpouring rain, I finished. I mean, that, that race, I was like sliding in my shoes, covered in mud. You know, that was that year everybody quit because of how bad that the, the rain was. And I finished that this year. Last year was just terrible. This year, supposedly a flatter course. Uh, Jason says it every year, but we'll see. drinking and uh, stopping and uh, laying in a fetal position on the side of the trail. We'll see how it goes, but so, so far it feels pretty good. Yeah? My first ultra. So this year, it just happened that I looked and it's fucking nice a job. large percentage this. of first timers. Today is my first 50K. I'm excited about it. All right, I've trained my ass off this shit. So I have to finish today. So I designed the course for them, you know, because all the veterans that come out here, most of those guys have run this race six, seven times, and girls, you know, those, they're out here to have fun. Chips. Yeah, you got whiskey? Uh, I got beer. We include everyone from the last to the first, right? And everyone in between. That's who we celebrate.
I mean, I remember Snake Bite was the first Yeti race that I did. We came out here, it was at night, and I was like, oh my God, who are these people? They're crazy. And it was just amazing. And that was actually a night race, and there was a lot of humidity, and it was hot. I was so caught up in all the fun, I didn't even realize things were miserable. It's just we were out here having a good time, and I was meeting all these new people. And, you know, there's people doing fireball shots and you know having beers, and we're running at the same time. It was the first experience I'd had like that. When uh, we were crossing like the river, I remember there was this guy in just his underwear or something, and like a wig, just like standing in the middle of the river. And that wasn't my underwear. That was a bathing suit, um, and I was dressed like Kenny Rogers. A lot of people thought I was Sam Adams. I like races like that that are so creative and he's so creative with everything he does like from his swag he gives away to logos that he creates or sayings he creates he's just really um, unique I guess out of the box in the stuff that he does. You think this is a coffee mug but Roadrunners only think it's a coffee mug it's a whiskey mug <laughs> and then a mini drop bag buff and fireball Fireball slushies might have been the been the good one too. Yeti races are distinctive. They're kind of like a big party. You go to like hang out and drink beer and kind of see all your friends and they have people with just insane outfits just running around. There's music blasting and it, it's a party, right? And then the back end you do a little trail running in there somewhere. So <laughs> run how you want to run, talk with people, drink Fireball, hydrate properly. You ain't gotta take life so serious. That's what Yeti's all about. I think the the skateboard has become kind of a symbol of the Yeti races. Yeah, I grew up skateboarding, and they would take like this everyday art, you know, whether and and you know tr make it their own, and it was relatable to what we we're doing. Skateboarding, same thing, like uh, the Minor Threat album, Out of Step, right? Like instead of the Black Sheep, we put the Yeti. Like we're out of step. We're you know, trail and ultra running is really, we are the black sheep of the running community. And those things relate to people and they relate to me, right? It's what I grew up with. So like, I want that punk rock art to come across to people, you know? So this year we've added all new marijuana drug test. That's how we followed closely by pregnancy tests. I feel like these are two important add-ons for 2019, you know? <laughs> Mile four and a half. <laughs> the fun hasn't even started yet. Cause I thought the brown trail was a little bit easier, but nope. <laughs> Let's do epic shit today! Yes! I'm doing epic shit. I had an orange. I can conquer the world. Woo! I, can do it. I can do it. Oranges give life. Yes! We got the THC with your baby life or two on it. How does somebody earn a pineapple? When does the fireball come oh, yeah. out? We got the mass salt. It's a lot of this language that like already set people up to fail in race descriptions, right? I removed all of that. Like we're here to have fun. How's it going, dude? Good, man. All right. How's uh, how's loop one feeling? Uh, good. I'm slower than I walk. A little shin splint action, but I'm moving. I'll keep moving until they pull me off. I found that adding two hours to this cutoff made people run better because some of these people always have run on the cutoff line now had this two hour blanket out, like, right? This window made the, the race vibe change, it made everything change, and that was our goal. Like, how do we make this fun again? How do we, how do we change the vibe? Easiest one ever, it's a piece of cake. Tell them, tell them, Franco. I'm all, I'm, I'm here all day, man. Woo! No, you're not here all day, because they cut your ass off. Let's yeah, go. Dude. I'm right here until they cut me off, man. Later, There's a lot of old timers that still feel, you know, you're giving these people an opportunity not to train and go out and finish a 50k, right? What the hell is that to them? And my response to them is like, you know, fuck you, just don't come then, right?
How you feeling? I started feeling it. We're running next to the river there. It's starting to warm up a lot, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure this one will be quite a bit slower than the first two. I think you just negative split the first two. Yeah. If my calculations were correct. I took a small wrong turn on the first one, so I kind of figured that might happen. But that's not gonna happen this time. <laughs> the fucking guy up front running, you know, six minute miles, that dude, you know, he'll blow, he'll jump over fucking markers. You know what I mean? Like, he's just like maxed out rolling. That's the guy you have to worry about, a girl, whoever's smoking it that day. That's, so that's what I always say. If the leaders, when the leaders come back to me, there's no excuse for anyone else, right? <laughs> so, I have run races where, you know, it's, it's really been a couple of arrows for, you know, 35 miles, 40 miles, you know? And it's stressful, but you know, <laughs> to be going down a trail and seeing people come back at you and they're like, this is the wrong way. <laughs> I mean, I like it, but you know, some, some people hate it. Here in like park like this, where you got shit like this running off, like with some other tape, like if you're new to trail running, that could really fuck you up. Let's look at someone else's race out here. They use fucking permanent arrows. Like, <laughs> like that's, that's pretty ridiculous. You know, like you're in a state park and to mark your race, you put spray paint down. Like, <laughs> like where, where the fuck else you gonna go right here? <laughs> Look, well, you need an orange arrow here and here? <laughs> I hate that, I, I got, that's my pet peeve. There he is. Legend. Oh man, slow. You're doing great. Keep it up. There you are. I know. Nine and three hours. I'm shocked. I don't know what to do with myself. Fireball. Fire up. How is this meant to be done? Well over three hours. It took me two hours and 46 minutes to get up here. That is awesome. She's rocking it. I'm doing great. I have the runner's knee. And this Dave is not doing it. This is not doing great. But I'm doing great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just disappointed I haven't had whiskey yet and I'm 20 miles in. Normally I'd be four or five shots deep already. So I'm about to fix that. Do you ever think if you ever really wanted to get good at this, maybe you would just cut out the alcohol during the race? Or, or I'm better drinking. I don't, I, mean, I have a hard time getting a runner's high, but if I have a couple of shots in me, oh man, I can go. A lot of people talk about this runner's high. I, I you know, I, I, I don't know if I don't feel it. Like I feel, great you know like i like i just feel like this is what i need to do i like being in the woods and i don't like to run fast so if i run long i have an excuse not to run fast and to walk up hills but i like to be in the woods bitch man i'm getting an interview i feel like every step is a blessing i, li I like to make a tough climb and get to the top and experience a really awesome view and stuff like that and see nature this is the epitome of the Yeti spirit. You do you, you celebrate life and the fun of running. You don't need to be serious. Oh, 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 I'm not on track. Yeah, fuck that. Represent the life you live. Put the glitter on, put the horns on. Get your tutus on, run. Just run. Stop when you want to stop. Run how you want to run, talk with people. I have the ADD, which is not a big deal, but I, I refuse to take medicine for it. And I, re I, I chose to go run in the woods and running in the woods, it like mellows me out. You, you know, it's kind of strange, but the first 5K that I finished, it, it brought me to tears. I mean, honestly, I got the same great feeling from running a 5K, running my first half marathon, marathon, first 50K trail run. You know, it was that exciting of 
I'm going to cross this finish, finish line and I'm going to get this thing done. Like when people go, you've hit the wall. Like I'm like, oh, what wall? Like, you know what I mean? When you're running 50, 100 miles, like what fucking wall, right? Like, you know what I mean? Shit gets bad, but it gets good, right? It gets bad, good. It's this whole thing. I do have those moments and it's typically with something I'm experiencing with a view on the course. When I feel like I'm having that type of a moment and it's, you know, it, it might be on the top of, uh, you know, Pike's Peak. You know, you're just looking at this creation here. Whatever created it, you know, it don't matter, but just that, that, and yeah, there's somewhat of a spiritual feeling in that. And it usually comes with a view that's just so majestic. And you know, you're taking that in while you're running and you know, there's, you know, our, our heads are in a great place and everything. It's not anything that I'm doing, it's, it's what I'm seeing. I have friends who say running 50 miles is stupid. Why would you do that? Running 100 miles is even stupider. Why would you do that? Stop picking on me, you know? So I'm weird. Let me just do what I want to do. And uh, it's that celebration of, hey, so we're weird. It doesn't matter. You know? I don't, I don't know. Um, some people get it, some people don't. But I love the fact that everybody here gets it. I think it's about proving something to myself, you know? Like, the, doing something that seems impossible. I, like, I just feel like this is what I need to do, right? Like, it's not like I wash away like the pain of the race and forget about it. I love that, those moments, you know? I love when I've been bent over the side of the trail puking and my body doesn't want to go anywhere, but my mind is going, you can make it. Like, you know, the optimism is just so big in ultra running and it just propels you to the finish. I've been told I couldn't do it, so I'm going to fucking do it. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, like I enjoy everything about it. Snake bite 50k, the first one, uh, there was a lot of rumor about someone getting actually bitten by a snake when in fact it was just people passing out from heat cramps along the side of the trail. It is hard to describe the humidity down here with the heat. Um, I just don't think people where it's not humid all the time can understand how you can sweat that much and you don't cool off and it just is draining. Man, to be 255 pounds and 90 something degrees is it's rough, man. What you'd want to do is get in a sauna and try to breathe through a r wet rag. That's what it's like. That taxes a body. Like, I don't care who you are. Like, you, you really have to go slow in the snake bite. You know, it's hot. It's, it's 30 miles, so I mean, you sure kind of got to, like, go through a little bit of everything, you know? So, one minute you're going to be hurting and, you know, not feeling it, so you're not, you know, you can try to push it, but it's a lot easier to walk that at that point and then walk then run it when you feel better to run. If I finish a 50K in 97 degree heat in Georgia, fucking A. <laughs> there's, not, there's not much you can't do, right, like in life. So, you know, especially make those summer, those uh, winter runs a little easier. Um, I'm just running on feel. So the sections I can run, I can run. The sections, I can't, I walk, and I don't worry about where anything is. I think I got too tied up in my watch a lot, and I would push where I couldn't, didn't need to push, and it would blow me up, so I feel really good right now. I can't tell you what I'm gonna feel like in 11 more miles. With loops like this, it's mentally trying to keep yourself in the game. At least for me it is, it's just like, I don't wanna go out for another loop. <laughs> it's much easier just to quit after a loop, you know? It's just, you know, exactly what you're doing the next time. Whereas if you're doing point to point, it's much harder to quit. What took you so long? I've been here forever. I tell people all the time, you want to be the loneliest person at the race? Win it. <laughs> like, I, I, as someone who sits in the middle of the dark at a finish line at the end of a 100 mile race, and the winner comes through at three in the morning, guess who's there celebrating? Me and him or her. It's a very lonely place to win a race, you know? And I, I love, you know, the Evan, a bunch of other folks that come out that win the race, you know, like Jackie Merritt says one couple Yeti races outright. They always stay around, right? Like to just also be help other people get in. 
like they are competitive, but at the same time, like very, very support, right, of the whole community as a whole. Everybody takes care of everybody else. No, you know, there's the guys out front, but you know, I'm like a mid packer, sometimes even back of the pack, and you take care of people. You know, if somebody falls, they stop and help you. If, if you needed water, if you needed something, I mean, that's what, that's what um, trail running's about, but it's also kind of the Yeti community. Sam, who I've never met, has been kind to help me the whole Aww. way through. We have a little army to get me to the finish line. Everybody takes care of everybody. It's like a, it's like a family. The, the trail running community, Yetis, we're one huge family. It's like a family. I mean, there's, there's a sense of family. I said, I mean, these guys are my family. Awesome. Right. Congratulations, second nice. place. And congratulations. Like, I feel like Tony's gonna kill me in my sleep so he can take over the Yeti Trollers. That's how Yeti fucking Tony is. I love him with my entire heart, and he will do anything for the Yeti. Yeah. Look at that. Right? I know. Oh God, so hard, <laughs> how you been? <laughs> Great. That's good. Rich is true till death. Fucking true till death. And if I'm ever in a bar fight, I know. I don't even have to think. Rich has my back. Rich will give up running races to volunteer and help at any race. That's what I love about Rich. About, I learned about the, the water. Do the furries in my day. In my day, we didn't do furries. In my day, back in my day. Back in my we day, knew the furries. when we dug the Grand Canyon, we weren't furrying each other. <laughs> Sir David, wait, oh wait. Dave Milner has always been there for the Yetis. And Dave Milner taught me how to run ultras. I've heard enough, goddammit. Go finish. I don't know, I can't explain it. It's just it's just a feeling you have. It's people. It's you know, they care about each other. Like when you believe in something and you wanna keep this thing pure, like how do you keep it pure? Like do your own thing, be vocal about it, and you know, invite people to become part of it so we can always have this community that supports each other. Every time you come to one of these races, you see everybody you know, and uh, it's just, it's, it's fucking fun. <laughs> we, we ultimately all are the black sheep here, yeah. right? And, and we all want that community family. When it was daylight. <laughs> How you feeling now, though? Oh, good. <laughs> um, you want me to just? I'll just start. And yeah, just start. Yeah. Okay. Yeti was her first ultra, and she was a, a true believer in the Yeti Army, and and really uplifted everyone's spirit. When she left us, uh, you know, it brought suicide up up in our community, and we all realized that, you know. Silence is a real killer, and we, you know, have struggled with always trying to keep the lines of communication open. Well, today we're out here running uh, Sweetwater Creek State Park, the yellow and orange trails. Some of uh, Amy's favorite trails, it's kind of a dedication and memory and how much we love her and think about her. Um, ended up with a really big crowd. I was surprised that we ended up with almost 20 people. So really, really makes me happy. I mean, she was always encouraging, always smiling, always laughing. Yeah, I mean, the biggest smile of anybody in the group. You know, you can do a selfie with 15 people back there. She's got the biggest smile. So there is a trail in there. I think Amy was probably the only one that ever used it. <laughs> but, but you can kind of see there's a trail. And that little tree was Amy's tree because that's the tree she always used to pull herself up. So this tree is small and mighty like me. Aww. With this thing, I went through probably the most emotions that I'd ever been through. Like, I was like really angry for a really long time about it. I wasn't ready to show up for a fucking memorial run. You know? I wanted to go to a service and say goodbye. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I wanted. Like, maybe 
because I grew up in a you know in Virginia and that's what we do and this is how we kind of get it out is you you're there and you 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 know you see it and this is the final and, and you're able to kind of get closure. Amy came out here and um, the first time they made out was like right here. And then, and then Amy immediately turned and stepped in dog poo. So <laughs> Amy, right? And so she sat down there and cleaned her shoes off. But they used to play Marco Polo because she was friends with his sister. And so they would just on the weekend like send a picture of where they were and what they were looking at. So this was deemed make up like make up point. So, but uh, but so she had lots of pictures of this. Yeah, she, did. Yeah. she she won an award here uh, for her age group and. One of the best pictures I've got is uh, presenting that to her. So. You know, it's like losing a member of my family, uh, my extended family. So, you know, it's everybody's going to miss her. You know, and you know, I don't understand it. I'm shocked. And she'll always be here, and you'll always be part of our lives. So, um, she'll never be forgotten or gone. That's why I got the tattoo because. She was ball of energy. I wish we had known, you know? It's tough to, to wake up mad that, that someone was so happy, you know, you know, took her life, but also destroyed these other people she was close to. That's like the year I DNF Yeti 100. I got to watch the 24 hour, sub 24 people come in. I got to watch Amy finish the year I DNF'd and she got Sophie and she brought her across the line and that was just amazing. And I think if anything, she's gonna bring everybody closer. And it's like having these kind of things today, it's like she would have been the first one here. How excited are you to be starting the last lap? More excited than the second lap. <laughs> <laughs> what has you keep coming back to these? Jason, his awesome swag, his lies. His lies? About easy races. Right. <laughs> and I get tricked every time. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something, Jeff. This shit could be fucking flat, right? and motherfuckers are gonna tell me how hilly it is. You know what I mean? I'm hot, I'm tired, everything hurts. I've got a shirt that says everything hurts and I'm dying and I'm thinking about putting it on. Yeah, that brown loop, it got longer on the way back. Typically, the first time I went down, it was, wasn't that long, it was just long going out. But it went, it was long on the way back. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, fun times. <laughs> What will it mean to you to finish? Man, it, it's it's a huge thing. It, it, it's, I'll be honest with you, I almost cry every time. It, it, because it's something I shouldn't be doing. It's 250 pounds, it's everything, you know, so it'll mean a lot, so. That's great, man. Hopefully. We'll, we'll keep up with you on the course, okay? To me, like when you're going that far, you know, sh shit happens sometimes. You you ha need to leave and drop out, like you have to drop out. <laughs> I've DNF'd, I've DNS'd, I've DN whatever. I have quit races, I have finished races, I've done it all. I don't know, you, you, you come out here and you do this stuff and it's hard, it's difficult, you're running up and down mountains, you're sweating, you're in heat. I mean, everything goes wrong. You know, I've, I've had stomach problems earlier, earlier in the race. And you know, that's what we do this for, is to see how far we can push ourselves, what we can do with that, you know, how far can we go. I always say, if you haven't, if you haven't dropped out of a race, you have not run a race. If you haven't dropped out, you haven't run one. You haven't challenged yourself. You got it, okay. I just gotta get back. Put a little more in there. One thing I hate about being a race director is I get these emails from participants tell me how sorry they are that they had to drop out of my race, right? And I'm like, 
it's just a race. Like, it's a DNF. Like, I don't give a shit. I'm just happy that you're able to race again, right? It happens. Like, if you push yourself and you try, you know, see what is at your boundary, then there's gonna, you're gonna fail. That, that's what, there's a lot of fun in that, right? You were out there for eight and a half hours. How awesome is that? I think it's all part of the, the experience. Shit never gets easy, man. It's like every day yeah, out here, you don't know what the hell you're gonna get. I mean, seriously, like today, it's handing my shit to me. It's a 50K, it's fun, I had a great time. It's fucked me up from the floor up though. But it just happens, man. What? I'm gonna run a race in a couple weeks, I may feel great, and everything will be a beautiful day, and it may be more fucked up than this one. You just don't know, man, it's like playing cards. My first loop was pretty good. After that, I was like, fuck. <laughs> It's just one of those days. Yeah, I didn't expect it to take me eight hours to do a 50K. <laughs> it's more of like a, it should have been like a five hour type of deal. Just enjoying it today. Feels good out here. Amazing. Could be a whole lot worse. At this point, it's just too dark to tell. If these green night blues would lighten up. Oh, shit. You okay? You okay? You didn't get that on film, did you? I probably did. <laughs> Thank you. You're, right. you're gonna hurt tomorrow whether you finish or not, so you might as well finish. No, you're gonna, you're gonna be great. I'm excited about it. Mike Tyson once said, everyone's got a game plan until you get punched in the mouth. I don't know, all at once I was laying on my cheek. <laughs> you're not gonna feel good the entire time. No matter how much you love this, you, there's gonna come a point where shit is gonna be in rock bottom. It's like, accept it go through it and it just always, you know, and you'll move on to the next obstacle. races where I've done really well and you know almost to mid pack and there's races where I'm DFL there are 13 of them as a matter of fact and I've enjoyed everyone the same it's my own personal accomplishment I'm not racing against you know the other people well sometimes I am but most of the time it's I'm racing against myself I'm almost done, Hello. officially, with my first 50K. I don't think it's dawned on me yet. I think I'm gonna start crying probably when I get to the finish line. When I came in today, I saw the sunrise over the lake and it was beautiful. And then, right when I showed the lady my pass, I, I started crying. Yeah. Cause it's like, this is it. So, I mean, mentally I've been able to try to stay with it. Mm -hmm. It's It's been hard, I'm not gonna lie about that. So Jason's goal is that everybody finishes and everybody has fun. I'm gonna finish and I've had fun. So <laughs> it's a successful day. <laughs> that last loop, I'm happy. I'm like, let's go do it. And then you know it's the last time you're gonna run across that bridge. It's the last time you're gonna tap this tree. The last time you're gonna jump over this log. It's all the last time. My best experience with him was when I probably ran the Yeti 100. And it was the first year he was offering the sub 24 buckle. I mean, I remember just running into his arms and, and, I'm, and, I, and we were just that close to missing it. I think maybe eight minutes or something like that. And uh, I said, um, I, I don't know if you thought we were gonna make it. I didn't think we were gonna make it, you know. And it was just like this greatest feeling to come in and get a big hug from him. and and kind of push ourselves to was a tough, a tough finish. Is there a difference with getting last place at a Yeti event than any other? Yes, most definitely, because uh, I DFL the Lean Horse 100 in South Dakota, and I, 
came across the finish line. There was no one there. In fact, everyone was in the auditorium and they were handing out belt buckles to the finishers. And they were all lined up on the stage in the auditorium and they finished up awarding the buckles. I was like, hey, where's mine? So, yeah. And then, of course, I'm sure a lot of people have seen my finish line footage at the Yeti 100. I mean, they all made an arch and I'm going through the arch and Jason gives me a big hug and yeah. 100% different. I even had my pacer call Jason at the finish line and said, hey, I'll give you $1,000 if you move the finish line <laughs> <laughs> half a mile. There is no easy. There, there is no easy 50K. There is no easy 5K, you know. And when I hear people talk in those terms and I hear people talk it's just a 50K or it's just 50 miles, I, I think it devalues people's efforts, and I, I can't stand it. I, I don't I have zero tolerance for that. Like, everyone has a story out here. You never know someone's fucking story. Did you think about stopping at any point? No. I couldn't. I couldn't because I, I and I'll actually show you the letter. I actually wrote a letter to myself a couple of days ago, and it was, so you're doing your, your first, first 50K, 50K today. I'm so proud of you. Your family is so proud of you. Your friends, your coworkers, and your running family are so proud of you. You have trained so hard for this. I hope you're reading this because you're bored. I know you're not thinking about throwing in the towel. Would you rather repeat your 16 week training plan or do this race in one day? Did you get injured? Which one is harder? Today's race or that stupid 16 week training plan? Remember Ashford Dunleady? 10 Hill repeats? Remember the same week you had to do 26.2 miles? Remember you wanted to go home after 18 miles at Sweetwater Creek, but you decided to go to Silver Comet to finish the other eight that day? Remember your training miles alone with friends? You have accomplished so much. Remember when you cried on your first 60 milers when you were barely halfway done? And Rachel pushed you through the tears? I hope you remember the journey and how you got here. You're almost there. Whether you run a 5K on the flat streets of Miami or a marathon there, or you run a hilly course, there is no easy. Kindness always wins. It's not the first, it's definitely not the last, not the middle, it's everyone. And when they show up at your finish line, like they're overwhelmed, but I'm even more so, right? Because I know their story. And uh, it's pretty incredible to me. You know, when you get to the finish, you have 50 people there sitting there waiting on you with a beer, saying, good job. And Jason, Jason there with his arms wide open, the Yeti hug from Jason. And I mean, it's, you know, you're home. He makes you feel like he cares as much about your finish as you do, sometimes even more. Jason's like a brother that I never had. He will do anything he can for you at any race. That's why everyone wants to do a Yeti race. I guess he's the, uh, the, the probably every mom out there, Jason's that guy that they probably wish that, uh, you know, that everybody probably wants their son to be that guy. He's like full of life and super, super welcoming. I mean, he is the most, um, embracing, welcoming person that you could meet, I think. Um, he'll talk to you like he's known you forever and he's your best friend and I think he makes you feel like you're his best friend when you're talking to him. That's I love it. I'm proud of you. I knew you were going to do it. I thank told you. everyone you would do it. Oh, thank I you. I had no fucking doubt. <laughs> was, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was fucking hard. <laughs> I had no doubt. Sonoma, dumbass, I'll probably sign up again next After, year. Well, that's how, it, that's how it always goes. Yeah. You keep going and going. You realize that you have to believe in yourself to do this. It has nothing to do with if you're a trail runner or not. Absolutely nothing with that. You can be, you can be, your, everybody is a runner. All it is is just you're moving your feet faster. That's all it is. If you have the endurance to do this, if you can go out for 
10 miles and still and stop and turn around, do it. Skateboarding, the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. You want something that teaches you about yourself, how to get along the other, how to fight, how to cuss, like, you know what I mean? Like, how to drink beer, how to smoke, like this, you know, skateboarding taught me everything, right? And running is the same way, like in this period of my life, taught me everything, like even more about myself. This is it. This, this is the, in a fucking garage. This is where we do so much good for the community. right here who just likes to destroy shit. <laughs> like, this is somebody's 15 year old kid that that's came out a, here with them, right? That's Look. not even a pushover. That's a damn, Look. somebody half sawed it. Yeah, it's really like, oh, fuck it. <laughs>